Molly Brown. Margaret Molly Brown was born on the 18th of July, 1867, in Hannibal, Missouri, in the United States. Her mother and father were both Irish immigrants and had four children together, as well as one child each from previous marriages, from which they had both been widowed. Molly stripped tobacco leaves until the age of 18, when she and her sister established a blacksmith shop. In 1886, she married James Joseph, whose parents were also Irish immigrants. They had two children together. Whilst travelling in 1914, Molly learned her grandchild had been taken ill and so boarded the next available ship to New York, which happened to be the RMS Titanic. Molly had led a successful career by the time she boarded the ship and was an advocate for women's rights throughout her life. Her acts on board the Titanic earned her the nickname the unsinkable Molly Brown, as she helped many onto lifeboats on the night of the ship's sinking and was forced to board lifeboat six. She was also commended for boosting morale as well as acting as a translator due to speaking several languages. Molly died at the age of 65 of a brain tumour in New York City. The house was originally built in 1889, so it's 123 years old. The Browns were not the first family to live here, however. They moved here in 1894 when the house was five years old. It remained in the family from the time they bought it in 1894 until Mrs. Brown's death in October 1932. At that time, all of the contents, every single thing, was sold at an estate sale, and the house itself was sold to pay estate expenses. So the house was sold out of the family. It became a boarding house for men and a home for wayward girls, not simultaneously. <laughs> it was going to be torn down in 1970 to become a parking lot. 18 private Denver citizens got together to raise the money and save it from the wrecking ball. They founded an organization called Historic Denver, which over the course of the last 42 years has become one of the largest nonprofit citizens preservation groups in the country. The wall and ceiling covering in this room are original. They date to the home's construction in 1889. They're not metal, you guys. They're a kind of wallpaper called anagalipta. This house was built with electricity for illumination. It never used gas. This house was built with central heat and this house was built with the most convenient of the modern conveniences? Bathroom. Plumbing, thank you. The stained glass window on the west wall is original. We have five stained glass windows in the house. Three of the five have survived the past 123 years intact. Of course, most people who have only a cursory knowledge of Mrs. Brown remember her as a uh, survivor of the sinking of RMS Titanic. Titanic, of course, sank on Monday morning, April 15, 1912, in the icy waters of the North Atlantic at about 2.20 a.m. Mrs. Brown was one of 700 survivors. Over 1,500 died. She grew up to be a lifelong campaigner for women's suffrage. She started the first juvenile court system west of the Mississippi, right here in Denver, with the help of her friend, the very controversial Judge Ben Lindsay. Uh, seated in the platform rocker is J.J. Brown. God love him, the guy had names, James Joseph, but he usually went by J.J. He was born in Wayne County, Pennsylvania in 1854. Very much a self-made man, he left home in the early 1870s, still a teenager, and moved west to the Black Hills of South Dakota where he became a silver miner outside of Deadwood. But he apprenticed himself to a mining engineer and in 1880, he left South Dakota for Aspen, Colorado, where he got his first job as J.J. Brown, mining engineer. After four years there, he moved to Leadville, where it was really happening, and got hired by Ibex Mining Company, the very same Ibex Mining Company of which he would become part owner nine years later. Standing next to him is Margaret Ann Tobin, T-O-B-I-N, Brown, born July 18, 1867 in Hannibal, Missouri. 
As I mentioned, she was the fourth of six children of John and Joanna Tobin. She was still living at home with her mama and daddy in Hannibal in January 1886 at the ripe old age of 18 and a half when she received a letter from Leadville. It was from her older brother, Dan. Dan Tobin had been living and working in Leadville as a silver miner for about a year, and enclosed in the letter to his younger sister was cash, cash for her to use for train fare to come to Leadville to find herself a husband. Thank you very much. She got herself on that train. She got herself up to Leadville. She met JJ in June at a Catholic church picnic, and she married him on September 1st in that same Catholic church, just six weeks after her 19th birthday. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> Son Larry was born 14 months later in November 1887. Daughter Helen, seated on her papa's lap, was born in April 1889. Coincidentally, the same time this house was completed, but remember, the family did not move down here to Denver till Helen and the house were five years old. Number one right here with the robin's egg blue brocade is Helen's room, the Brown's daughter. The dark green bedroom that you come to next is Mrs. Brown's bedroom. It's the only room in the house with a wall-to-wall -wall carpet. Across the hall with the seafoam green brocade is Mr. Brown's bedroom. It's the largest bedroom in the house the only one with a fireplace, and yes, they had separate bedrooms. This tiny bedroom we call the Tobin Room, it's where her mama and daddy, John and Joanna Tobin, lived. Her daddy died in this room in 1899. Her mom, uh, Joanna, died at St. Joseph's in 1905. 